Um, okay, my question, I, my, I don't believe my husband is having an affair. He says he's not having an affair, and everything I can, I have looked at doesn't lead that way at all. He did move out of our family home eight months ago and moved into our second um, home that we have, a vacation home that we were supposed to move into and live together. Our kids are in college, and that was our goal. Um, eight months ago, he left, and um, just things weren't going well for us, so um, he's left and has been living on his own. Okay. Um, we are in contact with each other every day. Um, but he just keeps saying he doesn't know what he wants. He doesn't want to go back to our lives before he left with the uh, fighting and not being partners. And, um, and so I'm just trying to figure out he's very receptive if I ask him to do things, but my feelings get hurt when he doesn't ask me to do things with him. And I'm just struggling very hard. Okay. And so if I'm hearing you correctly, the primary reason that he wanted out was because of the fact that you guys fight. Is that correct? Yes, we were just fighting and not connecting. I was pushing him away and um, just acting like I didn't need him. Mm -hmm. And uh, he got sick of it, I think, and gotcha. left. <laughs> okay. Did he feel controlled? I don't think he felt controlled. I just think he felt unneeded, unwanted, unvalued. Gotcha. Gotcha. And I was probably giving him those feelings. All right. Now, I'm going to ask a question. And if it's too personal, just say, that's none of your business, Dr. No. Wayne. Okay. Okay. Uh, when you were growing up, is that the way you felt? If you felt that people weren't going to be there for you? Like your parents, for example, that if, when you needed them, that, that they probably weren't going to be there for you? Mm, definitely not. I think I have um, two amazing parents. And they mm -hmm. stayed together. You know what? I, I guess, to be honest, I met someone, um, a friend, a girlfriend, that um, her relationship, I watched their marriage. Um, she pushed him away and pushed him away, and he kept coming back mm -hmm. hard and loved her more. And I think I saw that because my husband was always very good to me but didn't show me a lot of um, constant love. So I think I pushed him away thinking maybe he would show me mm -hmm. more love because he was afraid to lose me. And, and it worked just the opposite. <laughs> Yeah. You yeah. know, people, people who do that typically are people that if we were going to test you with some of the social science testings would be people that uh, we call preoccupied and preoccupied people are people that are worried that the other person is not going to be there for them. Now, often that comes out of childhood, but you said it doesn't come out of your childhood. Did you feel that right. he was not going to be there for you? That are you, did you worry that he was yeah. not going to be there for you? Yeah. And do you know how that originated? Sure. Yeah. If it didn't originate in childhood, what I did don't. that mean? Where did that come from? No, I guess um, I'm going to guess, honestly, we dated for seven years and I guess um, it just seemed like it always took him a long time to want to commit to me. Um, mm -hmm. And so is he a person that tends to process before he acts? He tends to think things through a lot before. Oh, he my God. He uses that word all the time. OK. He uses that word all the time. And you're, but you're but you're but you're a person that's a person of action, correct? Instantly, yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you realize that your personalities are in direct contradiction to each other, which is not necessarily a bad thing. Okay. It just means you process okay. differently. And, and it's kind of interesting that your friend would push her husband away and he would break back through and she'd push him away and he'd break back through. Now, if I were a betting man, which I'm not, but if I were a betting man, I would bet money that at some point he won't. At some point he'd finally say, that's it. I can't play this game anymore. I'm not coming back anymore. Agreed. Okay. So using that strategy, as you've already figured out, obviously was not a very good strategy. And, and rather nope. than giving you what you wanted, it gave you just the opposite. So here's the deal. This is fixable. Okay. It really is. But part of what's going to be required if you're going to fix this, there's going to be several things, but here's a couple of them. One is that you guys are going to have to figure out how do you, the fast paced, decisive person, and the processor, how do you combine that in a way where he doesn't feel pressured, but you don't feel disrespected where that you can anticipate. Okay. okay. That's doable. That's actually a doable thing, but it is a process and it does take some great education. I mean, first of all, just in understanding how that works. And then secondly, specifically, how does that work with the two of you? 
And then another thing has to do with the fact that if you remember, we talk about a lot, if you've ever heard us talk before, that people don't leave what they have unless they believe what they're going to is better. Now, what you described for me, no, I'm not saying it is better. They believe what they're going to is better. And what I heard you describe is because he felt pressured, he felt pushed away, all those kinds of things. He, he thought, okay, I can't live like that. Living alone would be better than feeling that kind of pressure. Yet you still talk to each other every day, which indicates the great likelihood that this guy still loves you. You think he does? I do. He says he does. Um, Good. He just says he can't go back to the life we had. You know what? I think he's right. I, I, I guess my question, I agree. And I feel like I've learned a lot. I mm-hmm. think I've worked on pies. I think I've tried to do smart contact. I think if anything, he gets mad at me when I um, do too much smart contact. Cause he's like, why aren't you? Yeah. I, I'm talking to you. Why aren't you talking back more? Yeah. Well, I understand the smart contact. We're not saying don't talk back. I'll get Kimberly to speak to that in just a minute. In smart contact, we're saying you don't pressure, but it doesn't, it doesn't preclude okay. responding. Smart contact, and, and Kimberly, I want you to speak to this in just a second, but here's what I'm trying to say to you. I think what you have is fixable. I really do, but it's going to take both of you learning some things about some of the principles I'm talking about. Now, forgive me because this is going to sound like a blatant commercial and it's not what I mean at all. But everything that you're dealing with right now are things that we go through in detail in that intensive three-day workshop that we do. I would love to have the two okay. of you in that three-day workshop because I'm quite convinced that by the time we get to those three days, you'll be looking at each other like, why didn't somebody tell us this before? <laughs> I mean, this, this is not that complicated. And now that we understand it, we can mesh it, we can make it work, we can be happy with each other. So that he doesn't feel that he's going back to what you had before because he won't you'll actually be making a better relationship than you had before where you will be more fulfilled, but also he will be more fulfilled. I'm listening to this story saying, good grief, we can help you with this. There's so many stories I hear, and I'm sorry to say this, sometimes I think, I don't know if we can help those people or not based on what they're doing, but based on what you're describing, this one's eminently fixable, but it's going to require understanding some really important things and then knowing how to mesh those things out. Is he as intelligent as you are? Because you sound pretty smart to me. More so. <laughs> Thank okay. You. More so. Uh, he, yeah. he honestly, he is such a good father. He's such a good husband. He's such a good, um, he is a truly a good man. He is loved by a lot of people. And I think I just messed up and I have, so much fear that he just can't trust me again. And I've learned so much a mm-hmm. lot through you guys. Mm-hmm. And I, I believe it is fixable too. I just don't know how to use, I don't know what tools to get us there. Okay. Have you been talking to any of our client representatives? No, Mm-mm. this okay. is my first time reaching out. Okay. Please call our number, our office number, and we'll give that in a couple of minutes. Ask for one of our client reps and, and our client reps can help you understand how you can go forward to the next step because this is one that you guys can have a good, great marriage. You can. Now I believe that about every marriage, no matter how bad it is. Mm -hmm. But when you're describing what you're describing, it's like, boy, this one we can help really, it won't take all that much effort to help this one. Whereas some of them, it's going to take a lot of work to get there. All of them can be saved. They really can. Some just take a lot more work. What you're describing is not going to be that difficult to fix if you just get the right information in the right place at the right time. So I'm urging you to call our office number. Is that going to be on the screen anytime soon? It's on the screen now. Okay. You can call our office number, okay. ask to speak to one of our client representatives and he or she will help you think this thing through because I really want to help you. Okay. Very much. I really want you to. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Very good. Thank you. Thank you so much, Vicki.